The statement of changes in equity is a reconciliation between the opening balance and the closing balance of the shareholder equity. What are all the changes and how the changes have to be measured perfectly, followed by details of the comprehensive income of the accounting period. Under each subheading, there might be a retained earnings, there might be a balance transfer and there might be a comprehensive income that has been obtained by the company. Good morning and welcome to the session 6 in unit 2 in IFRS and in this session we are going to talk about a very important topic called as the change in the statement, the changes that we are going to bring in terms of equity. Now, moving forward, let us first try to understand what are the changes, the statements that tries to emphasize about the changes in equity. Now, when you start here, the statement of changes in equity is a reconciliation between the opening balance and the closing balance of the shareholder equity. So what is that we are trying to project here or what is that we are trying to tell is that we are now trying to talk about the balancing factor. We are now trying to tell you that whatever is the differences that you have seen from the opening balance and that of the closing balance that is what we are going to talk about as the shareholders equity it is a financial statement which summarizes the transactions and related to that of the shareholders equity over an accounting period so this is very very important for us to know why because in this case, what is going to happen is that we are going to account for the entire changes in equity over the complete period, over a year altogether. So that's why I would say that this is a very, very important statement that is going to talk about the summary of changes followed by the movement in retained earnings, the other reserves and the changes in share capital such as the issue of new shares, payment of dividends that has happened, all of them are going to be recorded in this report. So this is going to be a very, very concise report, a comprehensive ideology altogether that's going to talk about whatever changes has happened over the last one year in terms of the equity capital. Now, most of us know that Whenever we are talking about those large companies, the multinational companies or the big Indian companies, there's always a movement in terms of equity. There's a buy and sell that happens in the market, transfer of shares that happens. And there are people who will buy it and who will sell it across in different areas and different angles altogether. So whenever there is going to be a shift that is happening altogether in terms of the equity, automatically that has to be recorded and that has to be let known to the market as soon as possible. So that's where the statement of changes in equity is going to come forward and let you know in terms of what are the changes that has happened over a period of time. Now, moving forward, let's talk about why is this needed? Now, the difference between assets and liabilities from one accounting period to the next will give you the movement in equity. Now, this is very, very important. This information can be obtained from balance sheet of the entity. So, it is highly important for each one of us to understand this factor because why I am trying to tell you all these things is that in case when you talk about this balance sheet factor, when you're going to talk about how it's going to work, where it is going to work and all those factors, you will be able to see that there is some movement which has been obtained from the balance sheet. However, this will not provide the details of change that has happened in equity. That's not going to provide you the changes in equity and the purpose of the statement of changes is definitely required. Now, many a times what happens in the balance sheet is that you will get to know some changes, you will get to know some activities that has happened. But at the same time, you will not be able to know what has exactly happened. 
where as the small micro changes that has happened has been recorded so that is why we will definitely look into the changes in terms of the equity statement so that is where this becomes very very important for each one of us to understand the statement of changes in equity followed by under the Indian gap, there is no requirement for this statement. So under the Indian accounting standards, we really do not emphasize upon it. But then the Companies Act of 2013 requires the movement in shareholders equity to be presented as a part of the note. So tomorrow, the Companies Account Act tells very, very clearly that Companies Act tells you clearly that in case there is going to be any changes, please present it in the notes of the account so that the shareholders, the public and the concerned person will come to know what has been happening in terms of the equity. Moving forward, why is the statement of changes in equity needed? As per the Indian accounting standards, very important, the statement of changes in equity is to be presented and includes in the following it is included how reconciliation of the opening and closing balances describing the changes in detail so it will tell you perfectly what are all the changes and how the changes have to be measured perfectly followed by details of the comprehensive income of the accounting period followed by details of changes and the impact when the components of equity are restated or applied retrospectively. So now when you look into this factor over the accounting period, what we are trying to understand is that there is a comprehensive income that has to be accepted and that has to be recorded followed by the changes of impact that has been caused by the equity movement. Now let me take a minute here to just make you understand the concept of comprehensive income. Comprehensive income means the income that is obtained, that is listed after the net income altogether. So there might be a factor that has to be included, that has to be told in terms of the net income altogether. Followed by the components of the shareholders equity. A statement of equity generally summarizes the changes in equity that are listed below for each class contributed equity, the accumulated balance of other comprehensive income and retained earnings. Now, when you look into the balance sheet, you will be able to understand that under each subheading, there might be a retained earnings. There might be a balance transfer and there might be a comprehensive income that has been obtained by the company that has to be recorded, that has to be shown to the public stating that at any point of time, the company has not cheated, the company has not made any kind of hidden income. They want to disclose it, they want to tell to the public under each class, whatever the contribution that has happened has been taken care, has been recorded. In case of the non-cash assets, the increase or decrease in the carrying amount which is distributed to the owners as a result of changes in the fair value of such assets. So automatically, this also comes into picture where we are going to record about the various factors telling clearly what are the matters, what are the factors, where are the assets coming into picture. So suppose if there is going to be a movement in terms of the equity where it has been borrowed, where it has been taken over or where you are able to get higher value altogether because of change in equity altogether, there will be a change in the value of asset. The fair value of assets will again go up for the promoters, for the owners altogether that has to be recorded and that has to be shown to the public moving forward we will also talk about the components of the shareholders equity now for the shareholders change in accounting period the prior errors the total comprehensive income dividends transferred of retained earnings and any other changes now if you look at each one of the statement it tells you very very clearly what are all the minute factors that has not been included for example that have been there might be a change coming in the accounting policy there are, might have been a prior error altogether a total comprehensive income which is not yet been recorded or which is not yet been told altogether 
dividend changes or transfer to retain earnings all this kind of things are needed for the shareholders equity factor this has to be told to the shareholder what are all the changes the company has bought in the last accounting period suppose these changes have been occurring on a regular basis the investor needs to know about it so that's why we are bringing in and if there are any changes coming into picture that also has to be recorded very very clearly followed by the components of the shareholder equity will also talk about share application money pending allotment in case the share has not been allocated or the share has not been given the pending money transfer has to be told or if you have the shareholder has to pay back the money the remaining amount that has to be given the compound financial instruments what whichever are linked to that particular thing that has to be done the reserve and surplus such as capital reserve securities premium reserve that has to be made a note of it the revaluation surplus for example, after revaluating the company on that particular instance, on that particular accounting period, whatever is the extra income that has been coming, so the revaluation surplus has to be done. The cash flow hedges and gains and loss, now that has to be recorded very, very clearly, followed by when a financial statement of a foreign company exchange related transaction how much we have gained how much we have lost what are all is our overseas operations and how much we have gained out of it that has to be recorded the debt and equity instrument through other components and income also needs to be recorded so what we are trying to find out here is that this is what we have been going through this is what we have been trying to understand in terms of the comprehensive income factor in terms of the you know whatever changes which you are able to see from the equity shareholders perspective so any kind of minute changes that might be in regards to the income or regards to the change of the equity capital has to be let known to the exchange and to the concerned people followed by now the components of the shareholders equity will also talk about capital redemption debenture redemption and the other descriptive format of each and every reserve if you look into the complexity here what happens for a public limited company is that whenever they are raising any kind of capital whenever they are going through the market they will have a lot of challenges in terms of the redemption the capital redemption debenture and other form of reserves which has to be clearly defined if that is not being defined due to the factors of non-disclosure automatically that can lead into a penalty statement altogether so any changes due to remeasurement whatever that has been defined has to be given very very clearly so that the investor knows that what are all the changes that has been mentioned followed by the need for statement of changes why do we need this because we understand one thing that it provides a detailed information about the movement of the equity in a given accounting period now when you know about companies like reliance or infosys or tcs or hdfc or when you talk about any big companies in the market which have been able to gather a huge amount of market capital just because of the investor confidence the other side that we also need to know is that any small shift in their capital base has to be let known immediately lead to the public because they are the investors here so any details any such kind of factors that has been happening has to be known immediately and their investments regarding whatever investment they have made whatever new projects they are going to do has to be known so this is a very very comprehensive factor that has to be clearly told and any changes has to be let known to the exchange as well as to the concerned person then only the company can create a true value for themselves in terms of accounting standards and can let know the public in terms of building up the confidence. With this, I come to the end of this session. I hope and believe that this session was highly informative, useful and of a great help to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be talking more about the IFRS standards and its application in terms of the accounting background, especially towards the Indian accounting standards. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.